Lipkin Center houses the Rubenstein Dean's Office, which is where the Dean, the Associate Deans, um, and the student, student Services staff offices are based. Um, so that's where Kathy and I live. Um, it also has most faculty and graduate student offices, as well as a student lounge and a few classrooms. So you may or may not have classes in the Aiken Center, but you will certainly become familiar with the space by attending office hours with your instructors, meeting with your advisor, or just hanging out in the solarium, which is the bottom right photo, um, which is just a really beautiful place that a lot of folks like to go study. Um, it's a LEED Platinum Certified Renovated Building, which is the highest green building rating, which is very, very cool. And because it was a LEED Platinum renovation rather than building, students have actually been involved in the research and implementation of the practices to reach net zero energy levels, which was achieved just this past fall, thanks to the hard work of the students and the faculty in our Greening of Rubenstein course, which you could take. The building also hosts an ecological design makerspace um, where a team of students is currently researching aquaphonics. I cannot explain that to you, but there's a cool video on YouTube if you'd like to learn more about that process. Um, and then the green roof of the building consists of eight watersheds. So there's just a lot of exciting elements to our campus home that we're very excited about. Um, but in addition to the Aiken Center on Central Campus, the Rubenstein School has several other facilities where students engage in learning and research, including the Ecosystem Sciences, uh, the Rubenstein Ecosystem Sciences Lab, which is down on Lake Champlain um, at the Burlington Waterfront, and the George D. Aiken Forestry Sciences Lab, both of which are quite a mouthful. Um, the Forestry Sciences Lab uh, also serves as home to several of the faculty lab laboratory spaces. So um, because we are the School of Environment and Natural Resources, we also like to get our students out on our new hybrid electric research vessel, which is one of, if not the first of its kind, um, both using diesel and an electric engine on the water, which is really, really neat. Um, and then of course, again, since our students are studying the environment, we like to send classes outdoors to the 10 UVM natural areas or um, one of the four research forests in and around Burlington and Vermont to get that hands-on experiences in the natural laboratories. Moving on to curriculum, as you've likely heard by now, UVM is a liberal arts institution, meaning that all students engage with the Catamount Core curriculum, which is that kind of big circle around the edge of that diagram on the left. Um, that has students engaging with just the breadth of subjects from the liberal arts to the core skills and then the university common ground values. And we'll get more into that in a second. Um, from there, we kind of pare down into the Rubenstein School core curriculum, which is visualized over in the tree diagram on the right. So students start out kind of in the branches at that exposure level and then move up the tree through capacity building and then culminating in your capstone courses. So throughout the Rubenstein core, students will be engaging in those knowledge areas and learning outcomes that are listed along the bottom. Competencies like integrative learning, problem solving, teamwork, communication, inquiry and analysis, and working across difference, both through field experiences, policy conversations, um, interdisciplinary approaches, and just working on real world environmental issues through project-based work in those um, capstone courses. Ultimately, our goal is that every Rubenstein student, regardless of your major, graduates with the confidence to integrate and apply those knowledge areas across disciplines um, through your professional and personal lives. And then over on the left in that smallest circle, those are going to be your major courses, which is the real essence of what you're wanting to study and apply toward your career and is going to be the most specific of the coursework that you're engaging with. Um, so back to the Catamount Core for just a second. As I mentioned, the Catamount Core is required for all UVM students, so not just Rubenstein students. Um, and it's designed to help you explore the breadth of the liberal arts and the skills that are needed to apply those diverse areas of knowledge. Um, and this, it looks like a lot kind of at first glance, but because Rubenstein takes a really interdisciplinary approach to our education and our programs, it means that a lot of these Catamount Core requirements are actually going to be fulfilled by classes you're already going to be taking either for the Rubenstein Core curriculum or for your major. So things like the math requirement, that quantitative and data literacy, you're going to be taking for your major anyway. The social sciences is one of the Rubenstein Core curriculum classes. So these are going to kind Kind of meld in and dovetail nicely with a lot of the classes that you're going to be taking anyway. 
Okay, so one of the reasons why you probably chose Rubenstein uh, is because of the emphasis that we place on experiential learning. So experiential learning can mean a lot of different things, and some of it is integrated into your coursework, and some of it is opportunities that you find outside of the classroom. So for example, starting with your field-based courses, um, you're all going to do field-based courses, no matter what your major is. Some of that is in the Rubenstein core curriculum that Emily was just talking about. Some of that is in your courses for your major or your program, but we're gonna get you out there in all kinds of weather, in all kinds of terrain uh, to really um, learn field skills uh, like data collection and analysis using all kinds of tools that's all resume building. Um, additionally, there are internships, some of which are specific and only available to Rubenstein students. Um, most of your internship experiences, you can earn academic credit in addition to getting uh, experience. Sometimes you can also get paid. Um, and we have student services staff uh, who, in addition to your advisor, can help you find and identify uh, internship opportunities, you know, really starting starting right away. Um, some programs like Parks, Recreation and Tourism require uh, internships or some kind of um, practicum uh, forestry as well. So you'll have that built into the requirements for your major. In other cases, it would probably count for your major. And those are things that you, those are conversations that you'll have with your advisor as you move through your courses. Um, you can also get involved in research as an undergraduate. Uh, you can work with faculty, you can work with graduate students, and additionally out, into, out in the community like um, Vermont Fish and Wildlife to do research. There are civic and service learning courses in which you'll get hands-on experiences. Um, your capstone in the Rubenstein core, that's, that's one of those types of courses. The greening of Rubenstein that Emily mentioned uh, is another service learning and kind of civic learning courses. And then of course there's study abroad. And never too early to start to talk about and start to think about study abroad. You know, we're going to do a lot of planning uh, with you when you start and we'll kind of map out if you want to do a semester or a year abroad. Those are things that we can look at as we plan uh, your four years with us. Um, another thing we just wanted to take a look at, and this applies to all UVM students, um, these are UVM's common ground values, and these are interwoven into everything that we do. It's interwoven uh, in your coursework, um, in the Catamount core classes, as well as the Rubenstein core classes, um, in how we approach uh, curriculum development and project development and working with community partners through internships um, and things like that. So throughout your courses, you're going to be asked to reflect on and integrate all of these values, respect, integrity, innovation, openness, justice, and responsibility. So the other thing that we want to mention, and you know, I'm sure that your high schools have something similar, uh, is academic integrity. So in the chat, or if you want to raise your hand or unmute, uh, we just want to get a sense of what does academic integrity mean to you? What does what do you think it, it looks like? We've been talking at you, so now's your chance to participate a minute. David, what you uh, got? Yeah, it's probably like uh, like doing your own work and like being honest about what you turn in. Absolutely. That's a huge part of it. Anybody else? I've got being an active participant in class, going above and beyond and helping others. Very nice. Uh, trying your hardest and using your own ideas and work to explain or explore an idea. Absolutely. Integrity.
All right, and in these overlapping circles, um, there are you know kind of three things that we're going to add uh, to these great definitions that you've that you've all shared. Um, there's a couple of things that we want you to keep in mind as you start. It's a huge transition. You're gonna, you know, you're gonna come to college, and there are just a couple of things that will help you be successful, both in your courses as well as in your college life. You'll just be happier. Um, the first one is show up, and that not only means showing up to class uh, and putting your butts in the seats, uh, but also showing up, being present, um, and kind of putting your whole self forward. I think. Somebody said going above and beyond, being an active participant. That's absolutely what we want you to do and how you're going to make the most of your college experience. Uh, be kind. And not, that not only means being kind to others and helping others, uh, but also be kind to yourself. You know, be patient. Be patient with yourself. You know, some people are going to have no problem, you know, transitioning to college. It's going to be, you know, super easy working with a roommate, you know, managing your own work and time schedule and everything, remembering to eat. So, but some people not. So in some cases, you really need to be patient with yourself, take a breath, it will be okay. Uh, and then lastly, and this is, these are really also life skills, but ask, you know, at this point, you don't even know what you don't know. So we're here to help you. Uh, please ask us for help. We are not psychic. We don't know what you need unless you ask us for what you need. Ask us all the questions. Chances are, if you have a question, somebody else has exactly the same question and just hasn't shared it yet. Uh, so you're going to connect with your advisor. You're going to connect with your faculty. You're going to connect with your RA. So there's lots of people who are here and willing to help uh, and support you. And we're going to go through uh, some of those uh, some of those contacts as well. Um, so one of our goals as an advising team, as Kathy just mentioned, um, is to make sure that students know about the support services that exist across campus to make your college experience as accessible and successful as possible. So as an educational institution, of course, there are plenty of resources available to help promote student academic success, such as those listed on the slide, um, including support specifically for first generation students, writing help, um, advising, tech support, et cetera. Um, I wanna highlight two of these resources just as examples. So first will be the tutoring center, if my links work. Yay. Um, so the tutoring center, is an excellent resource that I highly recommend getting involved with immediately in your first semester, especially for some of those foundational courses like chemistry, biology, math. The tutoring center can be your new best friend. So in addition to subject area tutoring, um, which is going to be specific area tutoring in those certain classes that you're taking, um, the tutoring center also has supplemental instruction sections um, where you can review lecture material and ask questions and learn from other people in the course. The SI leaders also host office hours, which can sometimes feel a little bit more accessible than your faculty members office hours for some of those initial questions. Um, and then finally, I'll highlight the study skills tutoring, which is really cool. Um, so you can work one on one with a tutor to learn and or refine your time management skills, note taking, effective reading, motivation, especially during maybe busy midterms or right before or after a break um, can help you connect to a study group. Um, there's just a ton of really great offerings that the tutoring center has and everything that the tutoring center offers is completely free. So it's just a really, really great resource um, to get involved with. Uh, if I can go back. Um, and then the other thing I'll highlight is our Rubenstein School career support. Um, not only because Kathy and I were the ones who made this web page, <laughs> that's us, we're on the side. Um, and you might be thinking about what you want to do with your degree. Um, other people may have stopped listening once I said career, um, but no matter where you are on that spectrum overall, I highly, highly, highly recommend checking out some of the resources that we have on this page as you kind of think through your goals, your purpose, um, and some of the why behind why you're wanting to do this work, why this major, why this field. Um, and to that end, I'll highlight these career resources by major. We have a little resource sheet for each major, um, so you can kind of see some of the work 
our alumni have done. Um, we have alumni positions over here, some of the different job titles and employment areas um, that that other students have pursued. Um, it might have you thinking, yeah, this is really exciting and I, I might want to pursue that as well. It might have you say, yikes, I don't want to do any of those things. Maybe I should consider another major. Um, ultimately, the world is very much your oyster and your career development has already started. Um, so it'll it'll be an ongoing process. And Kathy and I are the in-house uh, career coaches for Rubenstein. So we're here to help you along the way. Um, in addition to academic support resources, we also want to support your health and well-being during your time at UVM. The UVM Center for Health and Wellbeing offers all kinds of services, including primary care, the allergy clinic, nutrition services, counseling support, uh, many other wellness services through Living Well, which is our health promotion office on campus. Um, so under primary care, I'll just scroll through some of the options to give you a sense of just the comprehensive care that's offered through student health services. I'll note that um, Health insurance is not required through UVM to use student health services, but it is available for students who are interested. The UVM health fee covers all core services at no additional cost. But if you have any questions about health services offerings or insurance, you can always visit the Center for Health and Wellbeing website for more information. Um, and then the UVM Division of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion also hosts several identity based centers, such as the Mosaic Center for Students of Color, the Women and Gender Equity Center, the Interfaith Center and the PRISM Center for LGBTQIA plus students. UVM also supports veterans in their transition to higher education. So as mentioned earlier, UVM's mission is strongly tied to those common ground values that Kathy went through and the desire for a more diverse, equitable and inclusive community across campus. So the identity based centers support this mission through education, advocacy, community building, identity development, personal and professional growth opportunities. Um, and we'll look at the MCSC website just as an example. Um, because there are programs and groups and events and resources um, through which students can explore, receive support, um, and just build community at UVM. Um, and then finally, another great way that students build community at UVM is through extracurricular involvement, uh, such as joining a student club or organization. There are a lot of several different kinds of clubs and organizations that are both affiliated with the Rubenstein School, things like the Society of American Foresters, the Rubenstein Student Advisory Board, the Wildlife Society has a student chapter, um, but there are also clubs that a lot of Rubenstein students are um, engaged with that aren't specific to Rubenstein, things like Femmes in Forestry, the Outing Club, People of Color Outdoors, um, Headwaters Magazine, just to name a few. Um, and students are able to join as many clubs and organizations as you want. There are over 300, I think, <laughs> to choose from. So there really, really is something for everyone. Um, Kathy has a couple advisees actually who recently started a Bananagrams club, which they're very excited to tell you about. <laughs> so it does not matter what your interests are. If there's a club that exists, we might have it. And if not, there are definitely going to be other folks on campus who want to play Bananagrams with you. <laughs> um, so be sure to check those out. And there's an activities fair once you're on campus too, to kind of get some of that. Um, and then and hone in on on your interests and how you might want to get involved. Yeah, the Banana Grams Club, they started themselves. So if you have an idea for a club, chances are you can start it. And there's also club sports. There's there's just lots of ways <laughs> to kind of expand uh, uh, your social network. Uh, so here we are, the lovely Rubenstein Student Services team, a robust team uh, of advisors and experiential learning coordinators. In addition to advising, we all have programmatic areas like Emily mentioned, uh, we do the career coaching. Um, you know, there's also study abroad specialty, wellness specialties, that kind of thing. We have a peer mentor program that uh, we're going to hook you up with when you when you get to campus. Um, so, uh, so please do call on us, any of us, uh, if you have any questions at all. Okay, so what's next? 
Uh, we mentioned your uh, registration uh, advising appointment, your group advising appointment. We've sent you an email. Actually, I think we've already sent you two emails um, about scheduling that. So during that meeting, starting next week, those meetings start next week, so we need you to sign up for one. Uh, we are going to look at your fall schedule. Now, we've block scheduled you into the courses that you need. It's based on requirements, prerequisites for things that will kind of keep you moving forward. Um, but this is a draft. You know, these are the general first year Rubenstein, your major even specific uh, first semester courses. When things change, things can certainly change. If you decide that you want to push calculus off, we can make that change. If you took AP calculus and you don't need to take calculus, we can make that change. So we're gonna work on all of that, starting with your group advising appointment and then finalizing it individually if need be. Um, if you've checked and logged into your My UVM and you've looked at your schedule um, or looked at your My UVM page in general, you might see that you have a registration hold. So that hold is there so that we can go over it with you. Uh, we've had we have many sad stories of people who made changes to their schedule and then it's, sometimes it's very difficult to rearrange it back. So we want to talk with you before you make any changes uh, to your schedule. Um, two of the courses on your schedule that we will not change uh, are two core curriculum classes, the Rubenstein core curriculum classes that all Rubenstein students are going to take. Uh, one of the ways we build community is that you take these classes with all Rubenstein students, no matter what your major. Uh, so you'll get to know everybody in Rubenstein through these classes. And our 1010 Natural History and Human Ecology is actually a two semester class. So you'll take one in the fall and two in the spring. So this year long four credit lab based course, lab courses are four credits, uh, is going to get you out in Vermont and you're going to experience all things Rubenstein. You are going to go out on the research vessel. Look, I'm on the research vessel uh, and do, you know, a fisheries lab out there. You're going to go to one of the research forests and do a dendrology lab. You're going to go backcountry snowshoeing at Bolton. So it's really everybody's favorite class. Uh, so you're going to get to experience a little bit of everything uh, that Rubenstein does. It's kind of your foundation. Uh, and then NR1050 is another foundational course. This is a one credit discussion based course. And in this course, you're going to learn the skills that you need to talk about difficult subjects, because in uh, in the spring, you're going to take the follow up course, the kind of the, the co this course yeah. leads into it is NR1060. And in that course, uh, you are going to talk about things like environmental justice, kind of more challenging uh, discussions. So having this course is going to kind of train you up and you're going to stay with the same cohort into uh, into NR 1060 in the spring, race and culture uh, in natural resources. I think that's the title, something like that. Yep, you nailed it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So uh, another thing you're going to notice on your schedule is that classes are in general are either Monday, Wednesday, Friday or Tuesday, Thursday. You're also going to notice when you look at your schedule on my UVM that there are 20 minutes between classes. Don't worry, that's plenty of time. If I can get across campus in 10 minutes, so can you. Uh, you know, even grab some food. Uh, so uh, so not to worry about that. Um, and as I mentioned, um, you know, there are going to be differing credit hours. Classes with a lab are going to have four credit hours because they are more hours per week. So most classes are three credit hours, three hours a week. That one that one discussion class NR 1050 is one credit because you're only going to have that class one hour a week. Now, just because you have those classes scheduled, for only one hour or three hours or four hours a week. Actually, the labs are longer, but uh, that doesn't include things like study and homework time. So don't forget that when you are thinking about your workload and you're like, I can take more classes than this, don't forget you're now responsible for taking care of yourself and all of your work and managing all of that together. So uh, we can talk more about that, you know, when we have our more individual advising sessions, but 
in general, that's what it's looking like. Um, Full-time status at UVM is starting at 12 credits. Uh, 19 credits is the max, unless you want to pay extra, and I don't think anybody does. So in general, your schedule is going to be between 12 and 19 credits. We recommend somewhere between 14 and 16. 14 may seem like a little, you know, it doesn't seem like a lot, but don't forget, a lot of times you're going to have at least one lab, sometimes two, sometimes three, and, you know, those labs can be five hours long. So, uh, you know, we're, we're talking 14 credits with two labs is plenty. You need 120 credits to graduate. Um, some majors are not going to give you that. So you want to consider adding a minor or a concentration, you know, or, or a certificate program, that kind of thing. But 120 credits is was determined because that average is 15 credits a semester for eight semesters or four years. OK. So I think we've said it four times now. Schedule your course registration appointment if you haven't already. Uh, we've sent you two emails. We're going to send you some texts if you haven't done it already. Check your UVM email for the scheduling link. Now, actually, starting on June 15th, we will no longer be sending, UVM will no longer be sending emails to your non-UVM email. So getting into the practice of checking your UVM email often and well uh, is a really good habit to start this summer because not only are you gonna wanna know about things like housing, they're gonna email you about all of that and your orientation group and all kinds of things, but we're gonna email you and that I know, we send a lot of email, I know, but it's really good stuff and it'll keep you from asking, Kathy, Emily, how do I find out what internships are available? Well, you know what? We email them to you every Friday, so, Check your email, make it a habit. That's my soapbox. Um, there will be links here, and I think they were in, linked in the email that we sent you, uh, you know, about scheduling the advising appointment. There's the new student resources webpage. There's a really nice checklist there of all the things you have to do. And then our new student, uh, oh, that's in the our new student resources webpage. That's the Rubenstein page. And that has not only um, a checklist in addition to the new student checklist, which is the UVM one, uh, but that number two new student resources webpage, that page uh, will tell you what you need to do and have ready for your advising appointment. So if your advising appointment is on Monday, uh, you want to have uh, those things done already. You don't have to do your whole student checklist now. I know some of you haven't even done graduation yet, uh, but um, your new student resources webpage you're going to want to take a look at before your advising appointment. OK, so there we are. Yay, Rally Cat, my favorite. Uh, so you're going to get to know your advisor. You're going to get to know your professors, your teaching assistants who are your peers. Um, the Rubenstein Student Services task, staff, I showed you all of those lovely, lovely pictures of us, and we're friendly. We really are. We are here to help, so please do not hesitate to ask us uh, and get to know us. We want to get to know you. Okay, so we can take questions now. You can put them in the chat if you like. I've got the chat open. You can raise your hand or just uh, unmute and let us know uh, what you're thinking. Any questions? Just threw a lot of information at you. Yes, I can put those links in the chat. Yep, and then also on the new student uh, resources page, this presentation with the links, with the links live, will also be on that page. So you can always refer back to this presentation and you know find those links there. Once you've got those links, we think it's a really good idea to bookmark this page uh, because then you can get back to it whenever you need it. So that first link I just put in the chat is the Rubenstein New Student Resources page. So that's what we would love it if you have completed before your advising meeting with us. Um, and that's that's going to be updated soon. Um, it has last year's PowerPoint. The only thing different is the brand. Um, and then the second one that I shared is the new student checklist on the general orientation page that you should already have access to. Great. 
Okay, so I have a question uh, about someone who has 19 credits on their first draft schedule. Yeah, that's too many. Uh, it is definitely easy to reduce this when you meet with your advisor. I bet your environmental science. Uh, so yeah, we will definitely work on that because that is, I will tell you right now, that is too many credits. Um, other questions. Uh, do I need to complete the math placement exam before the group advising session? No. Uh, before the individual session? Yes, because if we need to adjust because the math placement exam is going to determine your uh, ability to qualify to take calculus. So if you don't get a 61 on the math placement exam, and you can take it more than once, but if you don't take the math, if you don't get a 61, they're going to kick you out of calculus, like going to take it off your schedule. That sounded terrible. So yes, they'll just remove it from your schedule. Um, and there are a couple of different ways that we can address that, like taking college algebra, talking about taking it over the summer, you know, whatever. But um, at some point this summer, do take the math placement uh, test so that we can adjust your schedule if we have to. Uh, another question, are we able to change up class times of some of the schedules on our drafted schedule? Possibly, um, you know, it's going to depend on what other sections at what other times have space and how they fit with the rest of your classes. So for example, we can't change your NR1010, uh, you know, and your NR1010 lab is five hours long because you're gonna travel on a lot of those days. So it's gonna be hard to work around that. We'll do the best we can, but that's something we can look at when we meet individually. Emily, feel free to jump in if I'm missing anything. Yeah, I, I responded to one other question too. Okay. We can, if you, yeah, want to go back and forth. <laughs> sure. So I can be uh, is it possible? I didn't receive the email for registration appointment because I cannot find we're, it. That's the one you responded to. We're going to work on that. Okay, mm -hmm. we're going to work on that. We'll figure and then, it out. So double majoring is totally possible. Um, it's it's pretty easy to double major within the same unit. So say, for example, you wanted to double major in like forestry and sustainability, ecology and policy. Um, we would just add that and you would have the same Rubenstein core curriculum. If you want to double major or do a dual degree program with a major in a different college, there's two different options. There's the dual degree program where you're doing all of the like Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science um, requirements for that major and all of the Bachelor of Science requirements for the Rubenstein major. So it's a pretty heavy undertaking. Um, or there's co-majoring. So not every major is eligible as a co-major, but it you would just have the like specific major requirements for a given subject. Um, and so that's something that I recommend talking to your advisor about, um, especially like earlier on, if you're wanting to take a couple exploratory courses in another subject, just to kind of see like, is data science what I'm interested in also? Um, and then that could just give you a little bit of a heads up for like what that might look like. And you can map that out and, and what that would look like for future semesters with your advisor. Okay, uh, one of my classes says zero credits when I click on it. That's probably a lab because your lab is not technically a particular credit. It just means that that section uh, that, that you're clicking on is the lab that's connected to the lecture. So it's four credits total with the lab and the lecture. So for example, if you're looking at chemistry, you've got chemistry lecture three times a week and then the lab as another section. And when you click on that lab section, it probably is saying zero credits. Also chemistry, just we'll get this out there. They don't like to give up their lecture or their lab time for exams. So you might see another section. If you have chemistry on your schedule, you're gonna see another section, which sounds terrible because it's like six o'clock to 10 o'clock at night. Uh, and that is your exam schedule. You don't have to go every week. It's only when exams are scheduled. Sometimes they use it for review sections too. Um, so in terms of the individual section, session, uh, advising session, that you're going to schedule with your individual advisor after your group advising session. So we'll go over how to do that. Basically, you're going to use the link below our email signatures to schedule a time. Uh, but let's talk about that during our group advising session. You might not need, need, even need a follow up session. Yeah. Um, and then, Emily, you see the question about forestry majors. Taking yeah. a math placement exam. 
Yeah, I was going to follow up to say not everyone is going to want or need an individual right. advising session that usually only comes up if like we want to make significant changes to your schedule and we just like need more time than the group session will allow. Um, and then during the semester, like once you're on campus in August, it's it's always helpful. And I, I mean, I like to meet with with students who are coming in just to get to know you, <laughs> as we mentioned earlier, and you'll be able to sign up for individual sessions that way. So the only thing you need to be worried about at this point are those group advising sessions that we sent the emails for. And that's the only email you like need to really be on the lookout at this point. Individual right. sessions are just like if you need them, when you need them. So no worries there. And yep. then forestry well, majors do not need the math placement assessment. Neither do PRT. Right. Um, unless you really want to take calculus. Uh, yes. So, yeah. So as, just to reiterate, you know, because there was a couple more questions about individual advising appointments. Those are only going to be necessary if you are going if you are get three AP scores and we need to drop three classes and add something new. Uh, but we're going to go over your schedules as they stand in the group advising sessions, and then you'll have a sense of whether you need to follow up or whether you're not, whether you don't. I love that. Let's go. I'm ready. <laughs> Can't wait to meet everybody. So exciting. I think well, it was in reference to not having to take the math placement, oh. but I love the energy nonetheless. <laughs> Any okay. other questions at this point? Yes. Oh, so I was going to type this out, but um, it was a bit too many words. Um, with APs, if I have seven new test scores coming out on July 8th, um, and a lot of those are like, you know, more hefty credit wise, like physics and calculus. Mm -hmm. um, how would that alter my schedule if I did pass and I was able to get rid of those courses? You can look if you just like Google UVM AP comparability, it has um, like previous years equivalency. So you can say like, OK, I got a three on AP calculus AB. And that comes in as Fundamentals of Calculus 1. So, for example, if you're registered for Fundamentals of Calculus 1 and you are really confident that you've got a 3, 4, or 5 on that exam, we can pretty confidently remove that class. If you're wanting to wait and see, you could wait until those scores come in in July. And that would be a case in which you might want to schedule an individual appointment and say, hey, like, I'm registered for English, math, and ch chemistry, but I don't need any of these because of these AP scores that came in. And then we could make those changes at that point. So unless you're really confident that you're going to okay. test out some of those classes, I would hold off on changing your schedule just because, as Kathy said earlier, it can be hard to change it back. Yeah, okay, um, awesome. So then the but individual yeah, but we can, sessions would be like sometime like mid-July then? Yep. Yeah, okay. we're we're here all summer. So anytime okay, there's cool. a question, we usually do like a second round of those um, individual appointments as needed in like July and August to figure awesome. out and finalize okay. schedules Thank before you. you're on campus. Mm -hmm. I just linked the AP guide, uh, oh, so you can take a look. You can take a look at that. Thank you. Um, I have one from one of the orientation things, and I've been like writing all over it. Perfect. There Great some resources. Um, for oh, Julia's yeah. question, oh, do you want to take that? Uh, the bio, I was going to take bio. Okay. Um, Julia, for Oops. an environmental science major wanting to minor in a humanities, absolutely. And we have a lot of students do that. Um, especially if you're wanting, again, that interdisciplinary approach. Um, and with the, with the Catamount core, because you're like required to take arts and humanities courses anyway, again, things can double count and be really doable. Um, so that's absolutely feasible. Okay. Uh, and the question about bio, in general, bio is a prerequisite for a lot of things. So finishing two semesters of bio for a lot of majors like wildlife fisheries, biology, or environmental science, that's really what we want you to do first. So we put bio, we block scheduled bio on your schedule. You can potentially switch it out, you know, for, say, chemistry, uh, because that's another requirement for most uh, prerequisite for most other upper level classes. So we like for you to finish those kind of foundational classes so that you can move on to other classes. You have more options, uh, you know, starting sophomore year for courses that require both semesters of bio as prerequisites. 
So yes, you need to take bio. Most everybody needs to take bio. And if you're not registered for it, it's because you don't have to. <laughs> right. Or because if for if you're an undeclared major at this point, um, we put you in other classes just to not make you take it if you don't have to. <laughs> right. Any other questions? These are really good questions, y'all. Good questions, yeah. While we're waiting for more questions, one of the other things that I will mention is that your group advising session is really for you, so not for your families. So uh, you can feel free to share the information with your families, but we're here uh, at those sessions to talk with you. And for the question about AP environmental science, um, a three or above satisfies ENSC 1010. That's in the in the AP comparability guide as well. I'm so glad you found it helpful. <laughs> Excellent. Cool. Well, Kathy and I can hang out for a couple minutes in case someone wants to hang out too and has a question or things come up. Oh, we have more. Um, math placement isn't usually a huge deal. If you can do it sooner rather than later, that's always helpful just because it's sometimes like it'll like redo overnight. Um, but they're not going to kick you out until like July. Yeah. So it doesn't like if you don't get to it before your group advising meeting, that's OK. Um, just keep in mind that you'll have to do it at some point if you are planning to take fundamentals of calculus, unless you have dual enrollment, IB or AP credit coming in to satisfy the prerequisite, which, again, we can get into that a lot more in those group advising meetings um, right. based on on some of those individual circumstances. And yes, the math placement exam is really just for calculus for math 1212. So, you know, if you are uh, Parks, Recreation and Tourism and you need to take a math to satisfy the Catamount Core, you don't need to take calculus. You can take numbers for naturalist, which is a super fun, only for Rubenstein students uh, math class, kind of touches on a lot of things that um, Rubenstein students uh, in, in their fields might need to do, like some statistics, some, you know, data presentation, visualization, that kind of thing, or you could take college algebra, that kind of thing. So it depends on your major. If you need calculus, you need to take the math placement exam. And if you have questions about it, you can you can e either email us or um, if you've gotten an email from your advisor requesting that meeting, you can email them directly. Their email should be included yep. in there. Um, or we also just have um, I'll put in the Resner Student Services. Um, can't talk and type at the same time. The Resner Student Services email that I just popped in the chat and hopefully spelled correctly um, is just like the catch all. So if you have just a general question and you're not sure who to ask, you can just send it there and it'll ultimately make its way to the right person. Yep. Yeah, and you know, since since we emailed uh, you for those appointments for the you know group advising emailing us back with a particular question. You know, this is the way we start the advisor advisee relationship. So we'll get to know you through your questions at this point. All right, well, now we'll hang out. So if you don't have any more questions, have an amazing summer and we'll see you in your advising appointments soon. Um, if you do have a question, you can hang out um, and either unmute and ask us or stick it in the chat. Um, and again, if, if you have any other questions, if you're lying awake at 2 a.m. and you're like, oh, I wanted to ask about this, just send us an email and we're happy to help that way. We won't answer at 2 a.m., but we will oh, answer sure. very shortly. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, y'all. Thank you, everybody. Nice job on teams, everybody. Yeah. Olivia. Hi, um, I'm just wondering, I haven't gotten any emails for the course registration, and I also haven't been registered for any courses yet. And I'm not sure 
if I'm just missing something. Like, I'm not sure. I'm a transfer student, so I wasn't sure if that's why. Okay. I'm just that sure. might be why. I'm going to look your name up in Navigate and see what I can find for your student status. Okay. I have registered for some courses on my own. Okay. Because there was no, like, red, like lock for me either. Okay. Hmm. Wildlife and fisheries biology is your major? Yeah. Okay. Yep, you're in. Send you. I can send you. You're in. She's a navigate. Yeah. OK, so Olivia, um, I'm going to send you. Uh, a link with the choices for WFB sessions. OK, thank you. OK, and so check your email, you know, in a little bit. And uh, if you didn't get it, then email that Resner Student Services email and we'll figure okay. it out. OK, thank you well, so much. Yeah, Kathy, I think as a transfer, Olivia may just not have been assigned to one of us yet, but I think okay. will be soon. So I think maybe double check the list of Cole sent us and then we can follow up that way based on okay. who, who you're ultimately assigned to and then we'll figure it out. Yeah, because we'll I did email all of my transfer students as well. Oh, okay. okay. So, so if we'll you didn't get it, reach I'll, out. I'll do it again. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, no Kieran, do you have any questions for us? If you are trying to ask, you are muted, so we're not hearing anything. So feel free to unmute or stick a question in the chat. There we go. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's yeah. a wrap. I don't see her on my list. I think I need to double check mine because I haven't done that yet. So that might be Olivia might be mine. Okay. That would be weird though. Why would he give you a WFB? I don't know. Also, Olivia might be assigned to a faculty member. But as a first year student, actually, that's that's incredibly unlikely. Yeah. So never mind about that. I'll, if, I can, I'll follow up with a call. OK. I'll look at my list and then I'll follow up with a call. Yeah. I can't even find the list. Um, we'll also, because you're going to have the recording, I think, cut out the beginning and then cut out this end part. Whoops. Sorry. <laughs> Stop recording.